You can save frequently used artwork like this in a library. A library that not only you could access, but also other people that you're collaborating with, even people worldwide. Having a library that you can all share from will keep artwork consistent. And even if you're working solo, having a library that you can pull from is really a time saver and it still allows you to modify each instance of the artwork. So in this tutorial, I show you how to use an InDesign library. Hey, if you would like a free InDesign swipe file that already has a rounded rectangle, as well as other vector art like speech and thought balloons, bursts and seals, click the link below or the icon in the upper right hand corner. Hello Creative! It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. But first, would you like a free cheat sheet? Mmm, nice. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to download your free InDesign cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. The first step is to come up here to File, New, Library. When you create a new library in InDesign, it asks you, would you like to save this as a Creative Cloud Library? It's this Creative Cloud Library that will allow you to share your content. If you don't want to share your content, it does give you the option to not show you this again. I'll keep this unchecked for now and show you that we're just going to say no. Next, it'll ask you where you would like to save your INDL file, which just means InDesign Library. I recommend saving libraries with a name that will make sense to you. For example, you could save individual libraries by clients that you work on, like their logos or frequently used artwork. So here I could just say client A. You also have the option of where to save your library. If I were working on a specific client project, I could choose to save that library in the client's folder. Here I have a folder for my InDesign tutorials, but you get the picture, right? Save. You'll see now that you have a free floating panel for your library. And you'll see the name of that library in each tab. In this way, you could have multiple libraries open at the same time and still be able to know which library you're in. So this is what you do. You locate artwork in your existing InDesign file that you would like to save to your library. After selecting it, you just click and drag it into the library. Here you can see it in the library, but it's called Untitled, which is not that intuitive for you to be able to understand what's in your library later. So you could double click the item and give it a name. Here I could say Blue Thought Balloon. Library artwork can be classified in any one of these ways. For now, I'll keep it at Geometry, and you could choose to add a description here if you like. When I click OK, you can see now that the artwork's name has been updated in the library. Another way to save artwork to your library is from the Options menu. If you have an item selected, when you come here to the Options menu in the upper right hand corner of the panel, you could choose to add that item. Or, check this out, you could add items on the entire page as one item or as separate objects that you could then rename. This is a really quick way to add everything at one time. Should we choose that? Voila! All of the pieces of art in your layout have now been added to your library. But you can see here that in my cloud artwork right here that I happen to have had a white cloud and then a black cloud underneath it. It added those distinct vector objects individually to the library. If that's not something that you wanted, it might make more sense to select the objects as a whole, then choose to add them to the library. So lastly, let me show you how to do that, as that might be the best way for you to add art objects to your library. First, I'll show you how you can delete objects. Here, I clicked on one and I shift-clicked all of the objects that I've added in mass. 
Next, I could click on the trash can at the bottom of the panel to delete. So if you just want to click on your object and drag it into the panel, that's one method. Another method is to choose Add Item by itself at the top of the panel in the Options menu. Lastly, you could choose the new library item at the bottom of the panel. Either way, when you choose to add that item, it will be added to the library. If you double click it, you can then rename it. So let me show you the real beauty of using a library. If I were to create a brand new file here, I could just drag that artwork from my library onto my new file and it will keep the artwork consistent. But that's not where the story ends. If I zoom in on my artwork here and I decide that I want to modify this one, you can see this piece of art happens to have been grouped. So if I come here under Object, Ungroup, if I select the ellipse part of the speech balloon, you can see up here under the color, I can make that yellow. Again, I could make this object here yellow as well. So now, even though I have this piece of artwork that I pulled from my library, here I can pull it again so you can see it side by side, I was still able to modify that artwork after adding it to my file. And so whether you're coloring it, grouping it, ungrouping it, scaling it, if it's vector-based artwork that you created within InDesign, you have the ability to completely modify the individual instance of that artwork. Vector artwork you've created within InDesign is only one type of art that you could put in your library. Other examples could be a logo that you've imported from Illustrator or a photo from Photoshop. So let me show you now how you could import photos from Photoshop and artwork from Illustrator into your InDesign library. I placed my artwork from those areas with a rectangle frame tool, filling it proportionately, and then I just click and drag it into my library. Same thing here, just click and drag. So it's not only just artwork that you can create within InDesign that you can reuse over and over again, but photos, and logos and you can see here that when you do that it keeps the file name of each when you import it into the library once again if I were to create a brand new document I could pull these objects from my library onto my InDesign layout and use them over and over again so that's the beauty of using a library in InDesign Hey, if you would like a free InDesign swipe file that already has a rounded rectangle, as well as other vector art like speech and thought balloons, bursts and seals, click the link below or the icon in the upper right hand corner. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.